everyone. It's nice to have you back from your long summer vacation. Um, did you all have a good time during summer vacation or did you rest well? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I find it a bit difficult to return to my daily routine after having a long break. And even at church, I find it very difficult to uh, maintain my uh, prayer life on a regular basis in such a hot weather. Don't you feel? Don't you agree? Yeah. Uh, many, many of us, many Christians have a hard time praying, right? To be honest. Prayer is not an easy thing to do. Even, even for pastors, even for myself, it's not easy to pray on a regular basis, right? Um, today, um, I would like to share some of the aspects of prayer, okay? Uh, now, how is it? How is your prayer life? Do you enjoy praying to God? Do you spend a lot of time in prayer? It's difficult, isn't it? And for many reasons, like some people say, oh, prayer is such a hard thing to do. For a different reason, number one is, oh, I don't have uh, much to say. I have nothing to say. Or some say, oh, Prayer is difficult because, hmm, can you think of a reason what hinders you from praying? Why, is, why do you think prayer is so difficult? Laziness, yeah. What else? Any other people? Your knees, you have a you don't have a good knee, so it's hard to delve down. <laughs> a lot of reasons, right? I do myself. But as many people say prayer is so difficult, there was this one man who actually loved to pray all his life. He enjoyed, he enjoyed um, having intimate relationship with God. And that is George Miller. Is he familiar? Have you heard his name? He's well known for his prayer. You know what? He prayed all his life, 93 years of his life. He prayed and 50, more than 50,000 prayer requests were answered by God. Can you believe that? And he, he enjoyed his prayer life. And um, today in, in, in the sermon, I want to compare George Miller's prayer with our prayer. And by doing so, we, I, hope, I hope that we will be able to find why, the reason why for us it's so difficult to pray. Okay? So, uh, hopefully that you will be with me throughout the, uh, the sermon. Now, let me give you a question. What pops into your mind when you think of God? What kind of image do you have? When you do anything for God, some say nothing, total darkness. When I think of God, some say oh, nothing comes into my mind. I don't have any relationship with God. God seems to be far away from me. He has nothing to do with my life. Some people will say the image of God is darkness, total darkness. For some, lightnings. Thunder, lightnings. When they think of God, they they fear that if they approach God, that God will punish them for the wrongdoings that they have done. Okay, so it, for them, it's not easy to approach God's presence because they fear, because they know that they're not perfect. They fear God, and there's this guilty feelings when they approach God. And for some, very rare, but some say, oh, holding hands symbolizes intimacy, intimate relationship between two people. For example, father and ch child relationship, a very close relationship, or between
between close friends, companions. Okay? It, this represents intimate relationship. Okay? For some Christians, they think, oh, God is my best friend. Or God, for me, is a loving father who cares for my needs. And it's really rare. And for George Mueller, his image of God was like this, holding hands. He had a, he enjoyed intimate relationship with God. And because of that, he, he freely approached God in prayer. Whenever he knelt down and prayed, it was a fun thing to do, exciting thing to do. Because it's like meeting his best friend or a loving father who's always ready to listen to his prayer. Okay. Uh, nowadays, it's so difficult to find this, a person like George Mueller who enjoys praying to God, don't, we? don't you agree? Yeah. And it is rare in a way, it is rare. And um, let's see, let's think about the beginning, okay? How was it like? How was it like in the beginning when God first created men, Adam and Eve? What was the relationship they had? Let's read from this verse, Genesis 3, 8. Let's read it all together. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God. As he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Now this verse happened right after the fall of man, right after Adam's disobeyed God, right after he uh, sinned against God. Now, assuming this, ver this verse, we can assume that before Adam sinned against God, he had a good relationship with God. In the verse, it's written that God and God walked in the garden, in the pool of the day, and probably it was his daily routine. And he didn't walk alone. He always had Adam accompany him. So it was their routine, daily routine. After they finished working, they would walk together. God and Adam walking together, maybe holding hands or by side, walking side by side in the Garden of Eden. And when they, they were talking to each other, they were sharing their thoughts, they were sharing their emotions, they were sharing about what happened throughout the day. And that was their routine. So they enjoyed an intimate relationship as a father and a son, or like best friends. And this is how God intended it to be. When God created men, he wanted to, he wanted to invite all of us to have an intimate relationship just like Adam and God. But what happened? Sin. Sin came along. Sin is something uh, Adam, he decided through his free will, he decided to disobey God's command. That is sin. Now let me show you an illustration. When God created Adam, okay, let's say this is the throne of God, throne of God, and who sits on the throne? God sits on the throne, and he is the king in Adam's life, okay? That was the beginning, and Adam, he obeyed to God's command. He loved God, and he followed, obeyed God's command, and only when that happens, they were able to enjoy an intimate relationship with one another. They freely could approach each other, talk to each other, pray, and answer. They had a mutual communications. But what is sin? Sin is disobeying. It's breaking that relationship. Now, when Adam decided to disobey God's command, it's as if Adam, let's say I'm Adam, Adam is sitting on God's throne. 
and Aiden is becoming the king in his life. That is the result of sin. And because of that, there's no place for God. This was supposed to be God's seat, his throne. But sinning, because of sin, Aiden sits on God's throne. And the intimate relationship that Aiden enjoyed with God had been broken. Okay? Now, what is repenting? How can we restore this broken relationship? Simple. Repenting of sins. But what is repenting? Is it, is it like saying, oh, I'm sorry, God, for doing this, this, this wrong thing? Is it confessing our, our wrong, our sins, or bad behaviors? No, it's more than that. Repenting, meaning that once I sit in God's throne in my life and I become the king in my life, it's, repenting is coming down from that seat. It's making it right again. Okay? And I come down from that seat and it's allowing God to sit in his place. It's allowing God to sit on the throne as a king in my life. That is repenting of our sins. Only when we repent of our sins and we make it right again, we can have the intimate relationship, intimate relationship that Aiden wants to enjoy. That's the only way to recover that intimacy. Now for George Miller, he knew this. He knew the secret. So he, it's sure that he repented of his sin. And he made sure that God only sits in the, in the throne as a king in his life. And that was his, one of his secrets to enjoy his prayer life with God. Now, George Miller, for George Miller, he, he put God in the right place. The object of his prayer was God, right? And he made it right with God. He made sure that God is sitting on the throne in his life. Because of that, he was able to enjoy that intimacy. Okay. Now, um, the second aspect that we I want to share with you is the subject of prayer. The subject of prayer. Subject meaning, who's praying? We are the one who prays to God, right? Okay. George Miller, he had faith. When he prayed, he had faith in God's word and his promises. Not only that, he acted upon his faith when he prayed. But let's uh, read the passage. Okay, It's from Matthew 7, 7 to 11. Let's read it all together. Ask, and it will be given to you. See, and you will find. Not, and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, the door will be open. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? Okay. Now, George Miller, he believed this verse. He believed God's words to be true. And he, he knew, he considered God as his loving Father. Because of that, he was able to pray to God in all things. Remember? George Miller, he was famous not only for prayer, but prayer was his method to run an orphanage. Throughout his life, he established five different orphanages, taking care of more than 10,000 orphans. 10,000 orphans. He was not a millionaire. He was penniless. He didn't have any money when he started the orphanage ministry. But how was this possible? Because he believed in the goodness of God. He believed the loving Father would take care of all his needs. He will help, that God will help him to 
take care of the orphans. Now because he had nothing, the only thing that he could do was pray. And in full faith, he prayed for everything, for everything. But what was interesting was he didn't tell other people that I needed this, I needed money, I needed clothes to feed the orphans. He, he didn't say anything. He only prayed to God in prayer. And God listened to his prayers and he answered everything. That was the amazing thing of George Miller's prayer. The third aspect that I um, want to uh, see is uh, the results of prayer. Now what happens after we pray? What happens after we pray? Um, do you remember all the prayers that you prayed to God last week? Last week's prayer? Do you remember what you prayed a year ago? Or five years ago? We, we kind of um, forget what we pray for, don't we? Yeah. So it's very important to keep track of what we pray and how God answered to all that prayers. It is so important because George Mueller, throughout his life, he kept a journal. He wrote down everything that he prayed to God, and also he made follow-ups. He wrote down all the answers, how God answered his prayer, and it was written in his journal and published in a book. Okay? It's very important because, because we will be able to see that God really listens to our small or big prayers. Nothing, nothing is missed out. He listens. And you will be amazed and surprised if you look at the prayer request that you prayed last year, read it again. If you have tracks of it, read it and see, see how God answered to all of that prayers. You will be surprised. Um, starting today, in our church, we are having a special prayer meeting at 4 o'clock. Today it will start at 4 o'clock. From Monday to Friday, it will be 8 o'clock at night, the special prayer meeting. We have it twice a year. It's an annual uh, prayer meeting. And um, most of you will notice this prayer card. Okay? You are to write down your prayer request. One, you keep it for yourself. One, you hand it in to the church and they intercede for you, right? Um, I kept this. Okay. This one is 2020. 2021, 2022, and 2023. Okay, And I've read all the things all the prayer requests that I prayed for during the past years. And I noticed that everything were answered by God. But I'm not saying that God answered in yes. It's not. God, God's answer could be, could appear in three different forms. You know what that is? Yes. Okay. No. Wait. So we have, to, we have to accept that God could answer our prayers in three ways. Don't just say, oh, I'm just going to accept yes for an answer. No. You have to accept everything. Yes, no, and wait. That is God's way of answering our prayers. And I was amazed because through this uh, prayer request that I prayed for, God really answered in the form of yes, no, and wait. Okay, let me uh, introduce one. From 2020, I wrote, I was diagnosed as autoimmune disease, which resulted in uh, hair loss. And I pray that God will cure my disease. So, what happened? What's the answer? No or wait. Okay, it could be no or wait. And I accepted as his answer. And because I, I uh, if it's wait, 
then I have to keep on praying for a full recovery. Yeah? And even if it's no, I'm okay because I can live with that. Okay? Another thing, in 2021, my daughter, I prayed for my daughter, she applied for a Korean university, and the answer was no, she failed. And, and it's not a bad thing because God opens the door. Sometimes he say no. Okay, not to refuse or deny. It's not, it's not that. It's not abandoning, but it's a way to um, change directions. Because he said no, she was able to apply to university in America. And she, she was accepted. And she's now a college student studying in America. That's another way of God's answering. Although he said no, there was a better way, a better answer. Another thing, I prayed for my son in 2022. He didn't know what he wants to become. So we pray that he will find his dream. He will find what he really wants to do for his life in the future. We pray for that. And the year after, he found out. He discovered his dream to become a cartoonist. Now he is studying art, drawing cartoons, and he wants to he wants to go to Japan to study drawing cartoons. That's his answer. God's answer was yes, and he's still ing. He's still in the process of leading us in prayer. So it is so important to keep track of what you pray and how God is answering to your prayer. Not only the yes ones, but we have to keep an eye on no, wait, because there is a reason for that. And God wants to lead us to know his will and to know his love, okay? So it's amazing, it's amazing. It's a proof that God cares for me. It's a proof that God listens to all the prayers that I've been offering him big and small, okay? Without it, without keeping track of it, you're gonna forget. You're gonna forget. You, don't, you wouldn't remember what you prayed for 10 years ago. Even though God answered, he was faithful to answering your prayer, we will not remember that. And we wouldn't feel, we wouldn't experience God's love for us. So it, it is so important to keep track of our prayers. Amen? Amen. Okay. Let's pray.